Hello, welcome to the Food Hygiene Level 2 training course. This course is specifically designed to make you competent in maintaining impeccable hygiene standards when working with food. Maintaining a hygienic environment is actually not that hard. Most often, all you have to do is apply common sense and do some simple things. For people who work with food, high hygiene standards are a must and should always be a priority. Imagine how you'd feel if you went to a restaurant and saw the way to touch your food with dirty hands and then serve it to you. Yes, that's something you definitely do not want. And it's not just about health concerns. Maintaining a hygienic environment and following hygiene practices ensures that your business keeps a good reputation among customers and in the food industry, thus benefiting you financially. Think about it. Do you really want your restaurant to be known as the place that gives you food poisoning? Of course not. This is why food safety is so important. But let's say you did not care about food hygiene that much. What could possibly happen, right? Well, mishandling of food can have serious consequences, especially in the UK. Here are just a few of the possible consequences of mishandling food. Food poisoning, pest infestations, higher business costs, prosecution and fines, loss of employment, legal action, the closure of business, imprisonment, bad publicity, excessive waste. So, now that you know why food safety is important, let's dive a little deeper so that you get a better understanding of different food types and the hazards involved. Different foods are affected by bacteria, viruses and moulds differently. There are high-risk foods and there are low-risk foods. Now, high-risk foods are more likely to carry bacteria, viruses and moulds. They are often ready-to-eat foods like shellfish and other seafood, pre-cooked fish, poultry and meat, including deli meats, cheese, cream, fresh milk, eggs and other dairy products, stocks, gravies, sauces, chowders and soups, pre-cooked pasta and rice, unwashed leafy greens, salad and fruit, vegetable sprouts. On the other hand, there are low-risk foods, this type of food doesn't usually need to be chilled or kept warm and can be dried and preserved in some way. Think of crisps, corn chips, crackers, cakes, biscuits, canned food, etc. Foods that usually have a best before, use by or shelf life date on their packaging. These are good examples of low risk foods. But just because they're called low risk doesn't mean that they are safe to eat all the time. When taken out of their packaging, most low-risk foods rapidly transform into high-risk foods. This means they should be stored and eaten precisely as the manufacturer's packaging instruction recommends. As you may already know, nobody goes to a restaurant to eat biscuits and crackers. So, restaurants primarily deal with high-risk foods. And because high-risk foods are ready to eat, according to the law, there are certain strict protocols that have to be followed. Let's have a look at those protocols. High-risk foods must be washed in clean water, stored in well-covered or sealable containers after washing, kept separately from cooked food, have utensils used on them washed before and after use, kept away from unwashed plates that have had other foods placed on them, stored underneath cooked foods if necessary, preferably chilled. Raw foods should not touch or drip onto ready-to-eat food because harmful bacteria could get transferred that way, which is the major cause of food poisoning. Bacteria can also be spread from hands, clothes, cleaning clothes, knives and chopping boards when preparing food. So those must always be kept clean as well. We mentioned food poisoning. Let's talk about that a little. Food poisoning is the most common and tenacious hazard in the food business. 
It is primarily caused by microbiological contamination, which includes bacteria, viruses or moulds in the food. These invisible organisms rapidly spread infection and disease, as well as introduce toxins to the food, and not to mention your body. Food poisoning is just one of the many foodborne illnesses. There are many forms of illness that are caused by different kinds of pathogenic bacteria. So when you're working with food, you must always keep your eyes open and maintain proper hygiene protocols. Any person working with food has the potential to be a foodborne illness carrier. A carrier is a term for someone who harbours and can potentially pass on a pathogen, even though they may not show any signs of illness themselves. Supervisors must ensure that if any member of the staff is ill, they must be kept away from the food and the food preparation areas. Speaking of supervisors, managers, chefs and supervisory staff in kitchens and food preparation areas need to be fully acquainted with every aspect of food safety, from manufacturer to consumer as it's their responsibility to ensure that all legal standards are met and that the business's reputation for quality service and food is maintained to the highest possible standard. In this introductory lesson, we have introduced the basics of hygiene, food types and the hazards relating to not being hygienic. In the coming lessons, we will explore more and we will give you in-depth knowledge about the things you must know to work in the food service industry in the UK. So keep watching and we'll see you in the next lesson.